Welcome to Wednesdays with Whitney. I am Whitney, and today I am joined by Erin Roland Hagen, who is the founder and CEO of Entrepreneurial Technologies, and is also uh, announcing her debut book, Soul Uprising. So we have a lot to talk about today. Thanks, Erin, for coming on. Well, thanks for having me on. Yes, I'm going to kick it over to you to tell everybody who's watching today exactly what Entrepreneurial Technologies is. Sure. Okay. Um, well, we are a custom software development firm. We do web-based software as well as mobile apps. So basically, we build products for people who have ideas but aren't able to execute on those themselves. And that's startups to big corporations. We work with everybody. You are an incredibly valuable resource in this community. So, and then, so when did this start? Give me a little bit of your foundation story. And I know that there's, there's a lot of topics that come out in your book about being a female CEO in the tech space. Um, so can you just lay the groundwork of that for us a little bit? Sure, so I've owned my own business for 12 years now. Mm -hmm. uh, so I started when I was 27. Uh, feels Some days it feels like three years ago, some days it feels like a million years ago. Yep, doing it for a while or yeah. doing it forever. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's been an interesting journey and I think, you know, I've always been a person who possess a ton of confidence in my own abilities, mm -hmm. um, sometimes to a fault. And so there have been times where I didn't realize that other people weren't expecting to see me in this oh. role, you know? Mm -hmm. And when I first started the business and I would go out on sales calls and talk to clients and all of that, I would hear a lot of these comments like, well, you sure don't look like a programmer. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And after a while that got into my head a little bit and I started thinking, well, am I supposed to look different? Mm -hmm. You know, am I supposed to be approaching this from a different yeah. way? And that led to a lot of inner conflict um, for me, just trying to navigate that world. Well, and when people's expectations of you don't line up with your vision of you, and what's that gap? Mm -hmm. Like, how do we close that? Or how, and I, I've had um, similar struggles of like, I just always, I just always felt like whatever room I walked into was the room I was supposed to be in. Yeah. And then when people questioned that, I was like, oh. <laughs> like, I didn't realize that I was supposed to be thinking about this. Like, I just right. thought it was. Yeah. Um, so, tell me about, can you give me an example of, like, when somebody said something and you were like, wait a second, I didn't realize that that was the deal. Or I didn't realize that was the perception, especially in relationship to being a woman in technology. Yeah, um, you know, I think on one of my very early sales calls, um, I, and this actually ended up being a client we had a great relationship with mm -hmm. and worked with for a long time, but, um, you know, I walked in, I was all excited, I had mm -hmm. my, like, cute little sales outfit, yep. and on, you know, she's got a <laughs> power sales outfit, outfit. everybody has mm -hmm. a lucky power outfit, mm -hmm. I had my power outfit on, mm -hmm. you know, I was excited to get go in there, and, you know, I had a pretty deep background at that. I have done work on like large government projects, you know, stuff under Homeland Security. So I felt great confidence in my abilities, mm -hmm. you know, and I walk into this room with this client and they're like, so is it just you? And I'm like, yeah, yes. yes. <laughs> we have another partner just me. <laughs> back at the office, um, you know, but just me here today. Yeah. And they're like, oh, wow, you really don't look like a programmer. And I'm like, Um, you know, and I just had that hurdle, that hill to climb, mm -hmm. and there was a client, somebody in the room who was kind of an ally for me, mm -hmm. and he actually was great, and he was like, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background? Yeah. And as soon as I started talking about my background, I could tell the client relaxed a little bit, mm -hmm. and was like, okay, you know, yeah. it's fine, she knows what she's talking about. But we lead with a face. Mm -hmm. Whatever face we're given, we lead with that, mm -hmm. and we lead with, you know, whatever, what, you know, just all the things that we come into the room with. And if people don't know about us ahead of time or don't know our background or our capabilities, um, that initial response is what we have to have to get through. Mm -hmm. um, that that qualifier the choir qualifier of just me. Mm -hmm. Like I, I hear that a lot. I hear it slightly differently. I hear it like, oh, is this your full time job? Oh, Ooh. that is. <laughs> and, and it's said with the, it's really said with the best of intentions. Yeah. But when people hear what I do, I'm a photographer, yeah. and then they say, is that your full-time job? Like, it couldn't possibly, like, for, and truly, for most people, it's not their full-time job. Well, what, what that implies there, and I think mm -hmm. this is like a sneaky little thing that a lot of people have, is 
there's that implication there of can you make a living doing this? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. like instantly that person is saying yeah. they are questioning whether you or anyone probably yeah. you know is able to make a living pursuing your passion. Exactly. You know, and I think that's a big point of doubt that a lot mm -hmm. of people have for themselves, but even more that the people around them have yes. when they're thinking about starting something. And that's an amazing way to frame that of I always try to think, and I think you do something similar when somebody says something to me that jive like just kind of uh, hits at my edge a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, so they're reacting to something that's happening here, but what, what's going on in them? What doubt are they having about themselves or what they're doing that would lead to them questioning that in me? Right. Because I did it, I was like, yeah, you know, I moved here three years ago and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do this. This will yeah. be my full-time job. And you um, starting your business 12 years ago, like, did you ever have a moment of doubt that this was gonna be your full-time job? No, I mean, well, I, there was a period of time where I was getting this going and I still had a job. Yeah. So there was a time where I was yeah. doing both. Which but, is amazing to have the energy to do that. I yeah, mind. it was, I was exhausted. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like energy, I didn't actually have any of that, no. <laughs> it was not my best year. <laughs> I understand that. Um, so let's slide into the book a little bit. So Soul Uprising, yeah. I'm halfway through it. I literally, every like hammock moment I get, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you know about me and my hammock. It's like Erin and I, and I feel like she's, you're speaking literally directly to me. I'm like underlining, <laughs> and circling, and sending it to the people who need it. But where did this book start? Where did it come from? What's the origin story? So the book actually started as an internal document and to give you a little bit of background, you know, we, we have a really strong internal culture here mm -hmm. um, that it's important to do things in a way that we feel good about when we go home at night, you know, and it's important to do things in a way that we're proud of and that we feel good about. Mm -hmm. That takes a lot of energy, a lot of energy. Yes, it does because you, know? you can easily do it differently with less emotional energy. Right. It can be so cut and dry that you take your heart out of it. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we were having a, a moment where all of that was kind of coming in at the same mm -hmm. time and it was challenging for us as an organization. And so we had to kind of circle the wagons and, and get really serious about, you know, what's important to us. And so mm -hmm. we, I wrote this document called the ET Manifesto. We were kind of having a Love little, it. Little <laughs> <dream. Yeah. laughs> so um, good. And then it became this really important document to us internally mm -hmm. because it described like this is why we're who we are and this yeah. is something we're really proud of. Yeah. Um, and so that stayed just kind of our secret little internal mm -hmm. thing for a while and then I've always had a love of writing mm -hmm. and you know I was from talking to people in the entrepreneurship world I was getting this sense that there are so many people out there who feel like it should be different. I feel like business isn't supposed to be this hard. It's not supposed to feel like battle all the time. You You're know? not supposed to feel so alone. Right? All the time. <laughs> yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, let's turn this into a book. Yeah. And then I was scared I wasn't going to finish the book for like six months. So yeah. I worked in secret for a while mm -hmm. until I was confident I was going to finish <laughs> it. Um, and, and you did. I have seen the hard copy. It is amazing. So, right? Oh my gosh. So like I, I walked in and saw it today and kind of like had a little freak out. Oh, it's pretty great. Um, so finish the book, but like the whole process, can you tell, give us a little bit of like, what is Soul Uprising? What's the premise of the book? What can people expect to read in there? Yeah, so um, it gives people a pretty personal look at what mm -hmm. my journey has been like. Yes, um, and you are incredibly generously candid. I, I would say it's, it's a very generous book that you've allowed us to be part of because those things are not easy to share mm -hmm. um, and you have shared them from a place of vulnerability showing very candidly showing the struggle of what you went through and then allowing us to benefit which is pretty incredible yeah so you know if I think about my life there's been this this kind of arc to it um, and you know, you start off and you're so excited and I'm going to do this new thing and it's going to change the world and everybody's going to love it. And, <laughs> I know, you know nothing about this. <laughs> like sunshine and roses, you know, and it's all going to be great. Of course I'm going to be able to make money doing it and, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's all going to be wonderful. And then things start happening that knock you down a little bit, uh -huh. and, you know, a peg at a time. Yeah. And, you, and after a while you feel like, I just want to hunker down. I don't, I don't want to do all, face mm -hmm. all these battles all the time, you know? Yes. Um, yeah. and, but when you get to that place, that's a really soul crushing place to be. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and you know, for me, getting to that place was actually what I needed in order to say, nope, this isn't how I want to live. I, I want to be able to stand proud in the purpose that I originally had. I want to be able to walk into work with joy every day. Mm -hmm. You know, I want the people that I work with and the people that I work yeah. for to feel that too. Mm -hmm. um, so the book really follows kind of that journey of, you know, that excitement and then that, uh, you know, feeling of disappointment and and despair and then how to let go of all the things that are causing that to get back to what you really yeah. want to do in the first place. And I think I, I like I resonate with your arc and I think many entrepreneurs resonate with your arc and I just thinking about the three years that I've been doing this and I like I just commend you for 12. <laughs> oh it's out there. It's gonna happen. Um, but thinking about my like the low that happened. And it was like a full year, like in the middle where like maybe nobody out there knew that that was happening, but, and there were signs of it. There were things that like I was writing or saying or doing that were showing this, mm -hmm. but I had to like, I had to go back inside yeah, and say like, okay, well I, you know, you have those moments and you're like, I know I can get through them, but how do I want to get through them? Right. And like, how do I want to serve the people that I've enjoyed serving? How do I like refine that space and you articulated that so beautifully because what you're you know you're building a vision for people we actually do some something similar yours is far more intricate than, than <laughs> mine but working with a client to achieve their vision right and that takes in mean, what you guys do, do it takes so much trust you are building their ability to create revenue right Whoa. Yeah, it's a huge responsibility. It's a huge responsibility. <laughs> yeah. And like from a photo side, like I am representing them mm -hmm. to the best of my ability. I'm right. helping you, other people, represent themselves. Like mm -hmm. how fortunate we are right. to be trusted to do that. And there's a lot. I mean, the whole book is about trust. Yeah. Everything in this book is about Can you give the, the, the four, the trust? Yes. Um, so... When I originally started, this book was called The Trust Code, and I thought mm -hmm. it was just about trust. And my editor kind of pushed me to go bigger. It was like, mm -hmm. trust is a lot of it, mm -hmm. but there's more in there. Yeah. But we cover building trust with your clients, mm -hmm. building trust with your team, learning to trust yourself, mm -hmm. and learning to trust the universe. Mm -hmm. um, and each of those is really, really hard. I mean, the, I think the ones you think of, you think about building trust with clients, right? Mm -hmm. That's what most people think is hard. Yeah. Um, but I think you have to trust yourself first. Yes. Above any, because if you don't trust yourself, right, you can't. Even if you're saying the right words, people will see through it in a heartbeat. Yes. Like it's just so clear when somebody's not when somebody pitches me, and I'm like, oh, you don't believe yourself yet. Yeah. Like yeah. I mean, you will. Maybe you will. But like, right. Yeah. 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 yeah I had that happen just the other day. I had a meeting with a longtime client and I was not having the greatest morning. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some things had gone wrong and kind of threw me off my stride and I walked into this meeting and we have a great relationship, but I was just off, yeah. you know? And she knew I was off, mm -hmm. you know? And she, she could feel it. Yeah, she yeah. could feel it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so we ended up having to regroup later because I was just, I knew that I was not presenting what mm -hmm. I needed to bring to her meeting mm -hmm. that day, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, I've had those days. And like, for, yeah, I've had those moments where I was like, okay, well, I saw that. I saw that happen. I don't know if anybody else saw that happen, but there it went. Um, anyway, um, so getting back, I do want to, you have made some beautiful, so first of all, creating a book, publishing a book, having a hardcover of a book, you have done this. Something I respect about you so greatly is watching you do this to the fullest extent. Without and this is really the only process I've ever watched you do because we we are we are new friends, um, but this is to me a huge risk. We were talking earlier about when a client comes to us, they pay us up front, we do the work. It's we already have a contract, right? With mm -hmm. with the interaction. Right. When you write a book, first of all, you're pouring your heart and soul and sacrifice into something that who knows. Who knows what's gonna happen? And so just the confidence it takes to do that and put that out in the world, like just, just 
take a more. <laughs> um, but I would, and so I want to talk about these affirmation cards. You uh, can we bring these into the frame? Yeah. Um, so Erin's made a package of affirmation cards that go with the book um, that are, these are all within the book, I believe. I've read several of these, so. Yes, yes. There's affirmations and lessons called mm -hmm. out in the book. Mm -hmm. So can we talk about, maybe talk about this one, show it, I'm going to show it to people. Yeah. Okay. So, I can't read that backwards. It's backwards. <laughs> um, so it says, lesson. Your purpose is already inside you. You just can't hear it above the noise of your fears. Can you give me an example of what that looks like? Yeah, so I, I wanted to talk about this for so long before I actually started talking about it, right? Because talking about how business should feel good to your soul and you want to do right by people and and make a difference and make the world a better place, that doesn't really sound like what you're supposed to say <laughs> in business, right? Like, that's not what you hear. No, you're supposed to, like, build a business to sell, and what's, like, how are you scaling, and how are you, you know, triple 10 x your profitability, and I'm like, hey, yeah. how am I making people feel good? Yeah. <laughs> am I like, doing yeah. that today? Yeah, like Gary is Vee is not doing a video on that. Yeah, okay. no, Gary Vee, sometimes he, I, he shows up in my Instagram feed because there are things about Gary that I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Might be a little crazy, but I appreciate <laughs> you're crazy. But sometimes in the morning, when I'm like, that's just not the way I'm going to start my day. <laughs> anyway, let's, start, let's, let's go back to this. Yeah, so I mean, I think for me that this book is a great example of that. And just the kind of putting myself out there and saying, mm -hmm. you know, I'm willing to stand behind this. You know, everyone I know yeah. who knows me in business or personal or whatever capacity yeah. is going to know that this is what I think is right and this is what I stand by. I mean, yeah. that's a big risk to put that out there. Yeah. And I knew that that was what I wanted to put out there for yeah. probably seven years. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And holding on to that. Yeah. Because I think when you hold on, at least for me, you can tell me if this is something you resonate with. When I hold on to my truth, mm -hmm. it and it's just mine, or if I'm just saying it, I don't feel honest. Right. And like, for me, that's like, if I don't feel honest, we're just, I'm in a dark place. Like, I yeah. need it to come out immediately, which yeah. is definitely one of sometimes my greatest faults, is it just comes out immediately. <laughs> um, but that's okay, we always know where I stand. So, yeah. um, seven years, and then what was your trigger point? So, I think that it's been kind of, you know, I would love to say there was this one exact moment did it but I think it was a matter of kind of getting to a place where we had we had a really tough year in the business mm -hmm. um, you know we we've been in business for 12 years 11 of those have been profitable years mm -hmm. um, and then there was 2017 yeah you know? <laughs> that one year <laughs> um, yep. you know, and, and when things are going well I think mm -hmm. it's easy to brush a lot of things under mm -hmm. under the covers but when things aren't going well you have to look at yourself and say okay why am I really doing this? Mm -hmm. You know, why am I putting myself through this? And and what's the meaning here? Because yeah. I could go get a job at Wells Fargo, right? Yeah. And I, there is not an there's not an entrepreneur that's been doing this for a considerable amount of time that I've talked to that hasn't been like, so someone needs to remind me why I don't go get a job. <laughs> I like I've said this out loud on my like dark right. days. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Um, <laughs> right. But there's and then you have to find it. And yeah. you have to articulate it. And the thing, what was funny for me is that it actually got the clearest for me when things were going really badly. Mm -hmm. Universe, don't hear that and make things go bad because I get it now. <laughs> we don't need this again. But have my lesson. <laughs> feeling good. We're, we're good. But you know, I, I think it's easy to get caught up in in the success sometimes and think that that's why you're doing it, mm -hmm. but it really probably isn't. Mm -hmm. It's like a nice to have, and yes. and some amount of success is necessary to make all the things yeah. you want happen. Just, but just enough. But. <laughs> But that's not really why you're doing it, yeah. you know. And so having that that really dark year mm -hmm. um, that forced us to get really serious was a great thing because all of a sudden it was like, yeah, I know what our purpose is. Mm -hmm. I know why we're here. Mm -hmm. I know why these clients are showing up for us because mm -hmm. we are the exact ones who are meant to work with the, these yes. clients. Mm -hmm. And that gave me the freedom to say, you know what? I bet there's other people out there who are exactly the same way. Yeah. And they need and to hear find this, them. They need to hear this message, mm -hmm. and they need to be given permission to do business in a way that is fulfilling for them. I love that. <laughs> makes me so happy. And I think um, for those of us who have gotten in, you said something. I want to go back. 
um, it was like the moment of risk, right? Or like the moment of giving yourself permission or what do we sit on? You were talking about yeah, the purpose. So I was thinking about very recently, I did my shorts post. Yeah. Thank and <laughs> thank mm -hmm. you. I'm wearing them today. I'm not going to stand up right now because that's anyway. Well, later. Um, <laughs> but I was thinking about how three years ago I would never have made a post like that. I never would have so, like, exposed my vulnerabilities yeah. like that. And then when I started Unapologetically Extra, that whole series was a risk. Yeah, I was asking people for something crazy. Mm -hmm. Let's show up and take photos for no good reason. Yeah. For, and, like, and not just like photos, like let's get it done. Let's yeah. like level up, let's show up. Um, because I found, I knew that when I started doing that, when I started posting photos of myself that made me feel powerful, when I actually stepped in front of the camera, and a lot of people don't know this or maybe don't remember, but the first year and a half, two years of my business, I wasn't posting photos of myself. I wasn't in front of the camera. I was just like every other photographer who doesn't have any photos of themselves unless the camera's in front of their face or they're blurry or they're not looking. That never happens anymore. Yeah. Like you will know what I look like because I want you to know what you look like. Right. And so it's like, but I first had to give myself permission. Right. And say like, I'm gonna go and take that. I'm gonna go take that risk. Yes. Um, and I'm not perfect and I don't have things figured out. And like, I have just as many insecurities as the next person, but whatever. Like none of that matters when you're putting yourself out there and like, Actually, this, can we transition? Yeah. Um, so, can I do this loud? Yeah. Um, lesson, backwards to you. Um, attracting haters is a sign that you are making waves. Keep paddling. So, I mean, there's no success, glory, which like isn't as exciting as like happiness, joy. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. But the more you put yourself out there, the more you get both sides of the coin. Mm -hmm. So how do you, how have you chosen to prepare yourself for the other side of the coin? I think a lot of it's a recognition. So, you know, and, and this is something I talk about a little bit in the book, but we've, we've all been on both sides of it, right? Like if we're honest about it, we've all had moments where we're like, oh, who does she think she is? Right? Yep. <laughs> And, and we've all been on the other side of it too, where we're getting yeah. that from somebody and we're like, oh. It's yeah. happening, it's all over me. Right, right, yeah, yeah. So we've, yes. we've all had that happen. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if we think about what, what does it come down to, mm -hmm. right? Most of the time, it's because we're triggering somebody, mm -hmm. you know? And when does somebody get triggered? It's when you are pushing past a limitation that they are not ready to let go of for themselves. Slow clap out there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yes, yes. So it's actually a recognition. You know, if you're staying safe in your little box, mm -hmm. you, you know, you're not going to get that. You're not going to ruffle anybody's feathers. Right. But mm -hmm. it's when you're pushing past something, mm -hmm. you know, and, and very often, you know, I had a friend say to me one time, you know, make a comment about the outfit I was wearing and, you know, how it wasn't appropriate for my age. And then later I found out that somebody had made that type of comment to her and mm. it was very hurtful to her, mm. you know? And so she had put that limitation on herself, yeah. you know, that I can't wear shorts like that, mm -hmm. you know, because of my age. And and because she was clinging to that limitation for herself, yeah. you know, she was unknowingly pushing it on other people too. Yes. And I think when we, and that's something that I've been personally working on, and your book is just a whole series of showing people how you've worked on that. But when I see, now when I, when I see a fear, when I see a limit I put on myself, I'm trying to really be um, uh, cognizant of a self self-imposed limitations, right? Because the small ones, like not wearing shorts, or like the clothing ones, are the craziest ones for me. I think for women, it's like, wait, so I'm so I'm telling myself that I'm not supposed to wear shorts. Like, what the, what's the point right. of not wearing shorts? Like. We are both conquering here today because I'm wearing a midi dress. Yes! <laughs> it's happening right here, right now. Um, so, smash. actually, let's transition. So, book launch. Yes. Should we just encourage everybody to wear something that scares them a little bit? Yes, do <laughs> something it. Something fabulous that scares you a little bit. Yeah. Who knows what that is, whatever that defines you as. But, can you tell us a little bit about the book launch? Everybody's invited. We're, yeah. like, just tell us what's happening. 
All right, so Tuesday, July 16th, mm -hmm. we are having a fabulous launch event at the Republic on Grand, 5 to 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. It's a cocktail reception. We have a lot of Prosecco to drink, exactly. a lot of hors d'oeuvres to eat, mm -hmm. um, and we'll be having a couple of community leaders in there mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So Nancy Morozzi from Pi 5.5, awesome. amazing organization mm -hmm. that brings tech opportunities to underserved youth. Will be speaking mm -hmm. um, as well as Brian Waller from the Technology Association of mm -hmm. Iowa. Love it. He's been a great friend to me in the industry. Mm -hmm. um, and then Daphne from our team is the yes. fabulous MC. Yes, love it. Love Daphne. She's actually who connected us. So yes. forever grateful. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'll be speaking a little bit about the book as well. Mm -hmm. But um, lots of treats for everyone. Lots of great conversation. Mm -hmm. And we'd love to have everybody join us. Yes. And a couple other little tidbits. Um, so this is your first book. This is my first book cover. Yeah. So I get to take the photo for Erin. So super excited about that. I will be there photographing the event, generally just supporting everything that's going on. And um, the Hummingbirds will be there as well. So there's gonna be a bunch of Hummingbirds out on the course with that. And I know everybody is. So we've all been reading the book as you know, Erin's been preparing and the buzz has been incredible. And I think I already told her this, but people are reading the whole book. And I know that that sounds like silly to say out loud, but like they're reading it cover to cover and I'm personally getting text messages with circling things and like all this stuff. And I'm like, this is the, this is the beauty. Like you are already bringing people together. Even just the, the few of us who have already read it were in. Yeah. So I can't wait for more of you to be in, to read the book. Like it, you will not be disappointed. Um, and yeah, Republic on Grand from five to seven, did yes. I say that right? Five yes, and I always panic about parking. There's parking right across yes. the street. Yeah, like literally that <laughs> lot after five is open, right? Yep. Okay, great. Yep. Yay, thank you. Thank you, oh Whitney. Gosh. Okay guys, we'll see you next week. Bye.